Today I'm in the great outdoors and I'd like to show you the tent combat one person made by the Eureka company. Now this is my favorite tent and I'll show you why. This is the Army required ID label. You can see the contents information, the national stock number, and then of course it was made in the United States. My tent is the woodland with reversible rain fly that has a sand color underneath. You can also get this tent in a minty green. I of course prefer the woodland camouflage. It's better for most environments. Now that I have the tent rolled out, let's do a quick inventory. Here on the left is the tent repair kit in its bag, and then the poles, the tent poles, and then in its bag. I also have some extra 550 cord, just in case I need to uh, secure my tent down to the ground in a high wind condition, or just to uh, have extra 550 cord available to me. And then of course the stakes and the stake bag. Everything is rolled up inside the main tent and the rain fly. My tent is not army issue. I purchased it new and it came with the instruction manual. On the first page has a parts list. That would be handy if you ever need to replace any components of your tent. And then in the following pages, it has very detailed instructions on the tent setup and use. This will probably be better illustrated as I set up the tent for you. Um, we're going to go into detail on setting it up and then I'll show you the tent. as I'm laying everything out so that you can see it while I assemble the tent. Let's talk about the tent for just a little bit. The Army, over the past century or so, has had a shelter half, which one person, one soldier, carries half the tent. You take the two shelter halves, put them together, and it forms a pup tent. That tent was made out of canvas, very crude, and if you touched it, it would leak water. So very simple, very old design, been around for, like I said, a century. This is Eureka's answer to that. This is intended for one soldier. It's a one person tent, or the army calls tent combat one person. It's a lightweight freestanding three pole dome tent with a bathtub floor. The tent combat one person incorporates all the important features requested by personnel in the field is what Eureka advertises. It's tough, dry, and fast. It has a full coverage fly with blackout fabric, two vestibules for covered gear storage, and two large drop-down doors with mesh windows. The entire upper body is constructed of breathable nylon for control of condensation and superior airflow. It's really a great design and I believe it's a good four season tent because it's totally enclosed. These are some of the reasons I love this tent. Here I'm assembling the tent poles. Even if you haven't set up a dome tent before, it's very intuitive on how this tent is set up. Here I'm assembling the end of the tent pole into the eyelet of the tent stay on each of the four corners of the main tent.
then the toggle and loop go around the tent poles and then insert the toggle into the loop. These little plastic clips around the tent poles make for a fast setup. Once you have the main part of the tent installed, the clips on, you can move the poles in the tent stays to tighten up the tent. It has two grommets in it, one that's looser and one that's tighter. Right now I got it in the outside one, so it's looser. But you can tighten up the tent so it's a little tighter, so it pulls a little tighter, or leave it a little looser, depending on your preference and your tent how your tent is sewn. Here you can see the two-part door and screen it has one door on each side and it has the loop and toggle so you can secure either the screen on the outside or the door on the inside so you can roll it up and get it out of the way if you'd like to. Again, the door on each side and there really isn't a head or a foot to it so it's the same it's a mirror image on each side that concludes the setup of the main part of the tent with the exception of staking it I've often used the tent without staking this main part of the tent you stake the rain fly that's necessary to do but you don't need to stake the main part of the tent unless you're gonna be somewhere where there's high winds and it's gonna move on you the tent is two foot nine inches or 33 inches tall and three foot six inches wide or 42 inches wide and eight feet long. Pole goes perpendicular to the main section of the tent and then there are four tent stays on the rain fly that attach with clips plastic clips that attach to the tent stays on the main part of the tent Arika advertises that this tent is lightweight yet heavy duty that's true it is heavy duty it's got heavy duty fabric heavy duty uh, reinforced zippers and I really like the feature that uh, no light can be transmitted through the material. It's that heavy. But the tent itself is not lightweight. It, uh, with the tent, the fly, and the frame weighs 6 pounds 7 ounces. And the pack out size is 7 inches by 18 inches. Eureka says it easily fits into the standard rucksack or molly pack. It says the frame is black, anodized, and shock corded 7075-T9 aluminum. And it can be set up multiple times and strike down um, over a long lifetime. Again, if you're a backpacker, that's not really lightweight. You can get summer tents that are a fraction of that weight. Um, six pounds, seven ounces, or seven pounds is really relatively heavy. But what you get is an extra durable tent and a four season tent for that weight. My helper is located in the front side vestibule. There are two vestibules. There'll be one on the front side and then one on the back side. The two vestibule areas offer an additional 17 square feet of gear storage. 
notice the additional flap that covers the zippers on the rain fly and then look you can see that this uh, perpendicular pole that's on the rain fly needs to be staked down both front and rear here's a look at the stakes and then the cordage that comes with the tent The rainfly does incorporate loops so that you can use guidelines. That's what the cordage is for and why I have the extra 550 cord. Um, the manual says that stakes aren't included for this, but if you don't stake the main part of the tent, you can use those stakes for your guidelines. You can see that the vestibules on each side don't have a floor in them. A uh, tent footprint would be nice to keep the, your equipment clean and uh, to keep the bottom of the tent clean. Usually when I use this tent, I've been in the woods, so it, it's stayed relatively clean. And actually the last time I used the tent, I had uh, a nice moss bed underneath me that was several inches thick. It was like sleeping on a cloud. So this is really a preference thing, but I said earlier there isn't really a head and foot to um, the main part of the tent. That's not absolutely true. You can see there's only two zippers on the rain fly. So you need to set it up for your preference. There's a, so there's a head and a foot really to the rain fly, which as you go into the tent, you can see here that uh, the zipper only opens up on one end. So there's a zipper for both doors that are on one end. I prefer that that be the foot. So you can kind of go in head first, you open up the foot and then go in head first. So I kind of have it backwards from what I prefer. So I'd really want to flip the rain fly around 180 degrees for it to make sense. So I don't know if you can, you can tell that from the video here. Take a look at this double stitching on the tent and this additional black fabric that's on the seams. I assume that's for reinforcing to make it a little stronger on the seams. You can see how thick the fly material is and how thick the tent material is. There the rain fly is up a little bit so it's letting the sun in. You can see how dark it is everywhere else. So it really keeps the light in. That's how thick the material is. You can see the tent came equipped with the zippers with these long poles with this 550 cord type poles, which is really nice, very robust zippers. Definitely a four season tent. I also wanted to give you a look at the repair kit. You've probably never seen anything like this in a tent before. At least civilian tents don't come with this kind of thing. A very nice little kit for repairing parts of the tent to keep it serviceable. Your average civilian might say, well, if you get a rip or something in your tent, get a problem with your tent, wouldn't you just exchange it for a new one? Yeah, that's true, you could, but if you get downrange somewhere and uh, you have a problem with your tent and you might not immediately be able to get a new one, you might have to live with this one for a week or two and it's nice to be able to do a little bit of repair yourself until you're able to exchange it. As I move in my tent combat one person to the shade so I get a little bit better lighting, I'd like to say that uh, 
you know, it would be nice to have just a little bit more room inside, but it's eight foot in length. So I'm able to get a little bit of my equipment inside with me in the tent, not just out in the vestibules. I know the Army's purchased a number of two-man tents, and that would be nice if you're going to stay in the tent for, for a longer period of time to be able to get your equipment inside with you. And yeah, that'd be acceptable if you're carrying the tent in a vehicle or something. But if you're carrying it in your rucksack, like I mentioned earlier that Erika said that you could easily pack it in your rucksack, then this is about as much weight as I really want to carry unless I'm actually going to be bunking with somebody else. So this is a great tent for a single soldier or a single person if you're out hiking by yourself. I'll time lapse this as I run through the teardown and then uh, I'll pause as I um, go through it to give you a couple pointers where I think I need to point out a couple of things to make life easier for you. I'm undoing the four clips on the tent stays or on the fly stays rather before I'm pulling out the fly rod gives it a little bit of slack so it makes it easier to pull the fly rod out. In addition to putting the repair kit in a Ziploc bag just to kind of keep it neat and orderly, I also like to put the tent poles and the stay pole with a rubber band around them just kind of keeps them neat and orderly when you pull them out of the bag. I believe these little things to organize help you when you're setting up your tent in the dark and that could happen periodically to me. Rain flies for dome tents are basically the same. They're all just that dome shape. So you start out with it in half, just fold it in half and fold it together. And then you pretty much just pie shape it. You can't get it in a consistent rectangle. So just pie shaping it is good enough. Okay, I didn't do it here, but start the tear down with the doors closed and the window closed or all zipped up. Just makes life easier, keeps the fabric so it lays flatter. You can see it'd been easier if I would have zipped it up when the tent was fully erect. But uh, you want to keep the doors and the windows closed anyway to keep mosquitoes and bugs and stuff out of the interior when you're not going in and out of the tent so typically you just have it closed anyway but you may have both doors open and letting the breeze go through so prior to disassembling the tent go ahead and close the doors and make sure the windows are all zipped up too
So here's the pro tip on folding the main part of the tent. Of course, just take the sides and kind of lay them together, kind of fold them down, make sure they kind of just lay flat, the material lays flat, and then use the tent poles as a guide. That's how long the, the bag is that the tent poles and the main part of the tent go into. Use that as a guide for the width. So really this tent needs to be folded in thirds and I fold it in quarters. So that makes it too fat to go in the bag. It, just, it still fits in the bag, but um, really I should have folded it into court instead of quarters into thirds. And you could use the tent poles as a guide when you're folding it. As I continue to take the tent apart, I'd like to say that uh, this is the Styles Adventure Series. At Styles Automotive, I do general automotive work modifications and tips. But I also love the great outdoors. So I'm sharing my love of the great outdoors with you in this video. And I hope to do more videos like this in the future if I get uh, a promising response from you. You can see what I mean here. I have my tan colored 550 cord coiled up or rolled up so that it's just the length of the tent poles so it lays flat when I'm rolling up my main part of the tent. Also added this one inch webbing to my kit. I have clips, the plastic clips on the end of it, made it so that you can draw it tight. That just keeps the tent so it's secure while you're putting it in the bag. Just makes for a little bit neater organization. Now that concludes the video. If you found it helpful, let me know in the comments and please subscribe. I look forward to your comments and I look forward to seeing you in the great outdoors.